I've been a photographer for over 10 years now and I feel very lucky to have made a career out of something that I enjoy so much. I've met so many amazing people along the way and made new friends. I have travelled around the world and seen some beautiful places and I have learnt so many things about something that was originally just a passion for me. I feel like these lessons that I have learned have inspired me massively throughout my career so I thought I'd share them with you guys and hopefully they will inspire you too. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. Lesson number one, the story is way more powerful than the image. Now while most of us like to have the latest camera gear, the best lenses, the sharpest lenses, etc. The reality is, is that the photos that will stand the test of time are the ones with the best story behind them. Let me explain with this book that I got a few years ago. It's called Photos That Changed the World and inside it are loads of iconic photos from over the last 100 to 200 years. Now as the title suggests, this is just a bunch of photos that have changed the world or changed the course of history. In terms of image quality, basically none of them are amazing. But none of this actually matters because at the end of the day it's the story within the photos that makes them so iconic. Obviously this doesn't apply to every style of photography. If your aim is to make a perfect landscape photo that's going to fill an entire wall, obviously you're going to need something that does have good image quality. However, for the most part, for people who just want to document their lives, for people who want to take photos that they will look back on in 20 years time and think that it's a great photo, I feel like this is a really important lesson to learn and it's definitely one that made me focus less on what I'm shooting on and more on what I am actually shooting. Lesson number two, staying on a similar topic, spend your money on travel and not camera gear. Now this is a lesson that I'm still learning every day but ultimately when I look at my work over the past 10 years some of the photos that stand out to me the most are the ones when I've visited places like Iceland, Australia and Hong Kong. If I'm going to be totally honest I can't even remember what camera I shot these on but that just proves my point even more. If you have a camera that works well and you come across a spare bit of cash I can guarantee you that spending that money on traveling will get you photos that you're happier with than if you spent that money on a new camera or a new lens. Number three, having an everyday carry camera that you can take everywhere with you will massively improve your photography. Now, if any of you have watched this channel before, you will know that the X100V is my camera of choice. However, it doesn't need to be this. It just needs to be something that you are comfortable with carrying around with you every day. Now this could be a small camera like the X100 or a Ricoh GR3, it could be just your iPhone, it could be an old film point and shoot camera, it doesn't really matter, what matters is the fact that you take it out with you every time you leave the house. So I would probably recommend something that's quite small and something that you think looks cool because you're more likely to take a camera out if you think it looks cool and you can kind of use it as part of your outfit. That might seem superficial to some people, but ultimately if you're taking your camera out with you, it doesn't really matter. If you carry your camera with you, you're going to be taking photos, and if you're taking photos, your photography is going to improve. It doesn't really matter about the specs of the camera or even how good it is. What matters is that you've got it with you and that you're constantly thinking about photography. Whenever you're walking around, you're going to be looking for different compositions, Having a camera that's pocketable or, you know, something like this that you can just kind of put around your neck and it's not really going to make any difference means that it's always going to be there. When you actually see something and you think it'll be a cool photo, the only thing that matters is the least friction from you seeing it to actually getting your camera or getting your phone and taking that shot. As simple as it is, the more photographs that you take, the better a photographer you will become. Lesson number four, understand that you can't be the best at everything. To be a master at any kind of photography, you're really going to have to dedicate your entire career to that style of photography. For example, if you want to be the world's best portrait photographer, you're probably going to have to dedicate all of your time to shooting portraits. Now for me, this is a bit of a backwards lesson because I don't want to just shoot one thing. I want to shoot portraits, I want to shoot documentary stuff, I want to shoot cars, I want to shoot gigs, I want to shoot a wide range of things. But knowing that to be a master at something, you have to dedicate all of your time to it, takes off a lot of pressure on myself. I know that I'm probably never going to be the world's best portrait photographer because I don't dedicate all of my time to shooting portraits. And that's okay. I've made that choice. I would much rather enjoy all of the different genres of photography than to just stick to one thing. You have to make that choice whether you want to be amazing at one thing or less amazing at loads of different things. And the lesson in this is that you shouldn't feel guilt if you do pick the second option. If, like me, you make that choice, you should get comfortable with the fact that you are shooting a load of things that make you happy and you're not going to get bored of one thing. That's not to say that if you do want to shoot one thing that that is wrong. Arguably the most successful photographers of all time have stuck to one particular style. It's all about making the choice that is right for you. Lesson number five, you don't have to shoot with your aperture wide open. 
I have been guilty for a very long time of buying f1.4 and f1.8 lenses and always shooting them at f1.4 and f1.8 because I really liked that kind of creamy out of focus bokeh in the background and for me that was something that set professional photographs apart from just amateur ones or photos that people have shot on their phone. When you're taking a photograph, you should really be thinking about where you want the viewer's eye to go in that photo. And for a very long time, I relied on a shallow depth of field to achieve that. But when you're shooting at apertures like f8 or f11, you have to rely a lot more on the composition of your shot to lead the viewer's eye to where you want. So this makes you think more about your composition and overall makes you a better photographer. Lesson number six is to create more than you consume. This is one that I'm still working on and I feel like in the age of social media it is incredibly difficult to do but trying to create more than you consume is going to make a huge impact on your overall mental health and your overall outlook on photography. Constantly scrolling and scrolling through Instagram and looking what everyone else is doing isn't going to make you feel great about your work. In small doses it can be really inspiring and it's obviously great to support your friends and support other photographers but by pushing yourself to create more and setting realistic goals on you know maybe just how much time you spend on Instagram each day you're going to feel so much better and when you do see other photographers work you will be more happy for them knowing that you've also been creating stuff too you're not just going to look at their work and feel guilt you're going to look at their work and in the back of your mind you're going to be proud of yourself that you are out there creating too Lesson number seven is that if you feel jealous about someone else's work, send them a compliment. I'm sure that most people don't like to admit that they get jealous, but unfortunately, just the world we live in and the way that social media is, it's really easy to compare yourself to other photographers, to other artists and to other people. The world needs a lot more kindness and I feel that sending these people a compliment is going to take away the negative feelings that you have towards that person which let's be honest is completely unjustified. Let me give you an example of the kind of thing that I mean. So let's say that you are at a festival shooting your favourite band and for the past two or three months you have been building up to this moment, you've been so excited about it. So you photograph the band, you go home, you edit your photos, put them on social media and go to bed. You wake up the next morning and you check social media and you realise that your photos just haven't done very well. For some reason or another, we all know that social media can be unpredictable. But then you scroll down and you see photos of the same band that someone else in the photo pit also took. And these photos are popping off, people are leaving comments, people are liking it, people are sharing it these photos are doing really well. It's really easy to start feeling negative opinions towards this person, but this person is just on the same journey as you. And just for some reason, whether it be they've got more followers, whether more of their followers like that band, whether Instagram have decided to show that to more people, whatever the reason be, Instagram in its nature just makes people compare themselves to others. And this can be really negative on your mental health, on your passion for photography and so many other things. My advice in this situation would be to just send that person a message and tell them how much you love their photos. Talk to them about the gig, you know, talk about how good the band were. I would say that 99% of the time, this takes away most of those unjustified negative feelings that you have towards that person. And who knows, you might make a new friend, you might make a new contact and that will ultimately just get you more work. This leads perfectly onto lesson number eight, which is that being friendly will get you more work than being good. Obviously, you have to know what you're doing. You have to know how to use a camera. You've got to be professional. But for the most part, especially with smaller clients, they would rather get someone to do their photography that they know rather than someone that they don't know, which may be a little bit better with a camera. And there's something really comforting for small businesses about using someone that they feel comfortable with. Now, this doesn't mean go around and be fake and try and make friends with everyone, but I would say that about 80% of the people on earth, you can probably have a pretty interesting conversation with. And in that conversation, if you just drop in the fact that you're a photographer, sometimes that's all that's enough that when they need a photographer, they're gonna think of you. And if you weren't rude and you were generally polite and you weren't a weird person to be around, they're probably going to be really comfortable in getting you to do their photography. Lesson number nine is to get inspiration from books rather than social media. Photo books are great for several reasons. Firstly, it's a body of work that a photographer has put a lot of thought into. So you know that there is some sort of meaning or some sort of story behind the photos. Secondly, unlike social media, there's no comments under them photos. It makes you look at the photographs and it makes you build your own narrative around 
each individual photograph and the photographs as a whole body of work. You're more likely to take your time looking at a photo if it is printed and you're not influenced by other people's opinions of that work. Unless you've previously researched people's reviews and opinions on the photo book, you're going in blind and you're making up your own opinion. This is really important because you can decide what you like and dislike about a particular style of photography or about a particular photographer's work and you can let this influence your work without feeling the pressure of other people's opinion. Overall, it will make you think much deeper about the photography. It's so easy on social media to take a glance at a photo, double tap and like it, scroll past on the next one. When you have a photo book in front of you, you're going to take your time with it. And especially if you've never done it before, I really do think that it's a unique experience that you're going to love. Lesson number 10 is don't forget to enjoy the journey. No matter what your goal is with photography, the end goal is not going to be where you're going to find the happiness. Personally for me, and especially with my latest project, which I'm going to speak about in a future video, photography has been a way that I can meet new people and hear inspiring stories about their lives. Photography over the last 10 years has massively improved my confidence, not only with a camera, but just in everyday life. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm extremely grateful that I can make a career out of doing something that I absolutely love. I really hope that you found inspiration within these lessons. And if you have, be sure to drop a comment below and let me know. If you've enjoyed this video, I have loads of other videos about photography on my channel. So be sure to hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one.